Look how the back comes over towards the front in a type of princess seam. Today you'll see three neat garments, two are tops, one is a dress, it's the same pattern. There's only four pattern pieces here, but it's really not a basic. Super beginner friendly, and if you're newer to sewing, you'll see how to sew it from start to finish. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and today is about some neat sewing. I have a really cool top or dress for neat fabrics that you can make up in a about an hour and a half at least that's how long it took me with some hand basting it's not a basic it fits amazing it's only four pattern pieces this is the title top and dress from love notions this is not a new pattern this pattern has been around for a very long time but it has been retested and updated to include the full size range and also the full bust option which wasn't there in the previous version i made a title top in 2019 rayon spandex and I've worn it and worn it and worn it it's now a house top because the fabric is just so worn out but it's still one of my best tops and most comfy tops and I've always loved the fit in the line art you can see that there's a scoop neckline there's different length options you can make it into a shirt length a knee dress length sort of above the knee and even a maxi on the front there are a type of princess seams there some seams that come from the back actually because the front piece is narrow and the back piece is wider and that comes over to the front and that's how you get princess seams right here starting from the armhole i think it's really really nice and looks amazing it fits amazing if you're making the shirt version you can choose whether you want to put the back on the fold or have a center back seam that will add shaping there i always choose the shaping options because i want things to fit my body as best as they can a center back seam is always my friend if you are making the dress then it does have a center back seam there's no option to make the dress without the seam which i think is nice because the dress is just going to fit better that way for sleeves you can make it a tank top so there's a cut line that's narrower here if you want to do it like that finish it with binding or you have a really nice short sleeve or a long sleeve so there's a lot of options there you, you can make the title with so many types of neat fabrics at least 25 percent stretch horizontally and vertically i would always prefer to make these tops that are sort of fitted up here with something that stretches vertically as well fabrics you could use a uh, single brush poly double brush poly ity rayon spandex modal spandex bamboo spandex Cotton Lycra I think would work really well for the top because the top doesn't have that much ease so you don't really need anything to drape there but because the dress versions flare out a little bit I would not want to make it in cotton spandex unless it was really soft and drapey which is hard to find in cotton spandex so just think about that maybe if you had a lighter softer Ponty Roma you could do that if you wanted it for more colder weather maybe some scuba that would drape nicely also just think about it I would even try to make it in a sweater knit for sure yeah you can just use a lot of fabrics athletic knits would work fine also uh, rayon french terry is also an, a fabric that's really nice for these types of designs one adventurous alternative that you can try if you want to is making the front piece with a woven only the front piece you still need the back piece to be a knit because it is fitted at the top if your back and your sleeves are neat they will stretch and it will fit it might feel a little bit more fitted but it could look really cool i made one like this in 2020 where the center is a crepe a little bit she and then the back and the sleeves are rayon spandex super stretchy so it's still really comfortable and it's a really great way to use up little pieces of woven that are really pretty that you might want to highlight against a solid at the back one thing about fabric if you make yours in a solid you will see this detail from the princess seam you will really be able to see it and i think that's really nice if you do a busy print then that seam line is going to get lost in there it'll still feel amazing but you won't really see it and out of the three that I've made, I have one that is like that. It's just a print all over, but it still fits amazing. That is absolutely fine. This print that you're seeing here is a rayon spandex. It's so light and soft and floaty and drapey. I can't wait to wear it. It's going to be amazing on the skin. But if you have plaid, a plaid print or a striped print, then it can really get fun because you can cut the back piece on the bias. That's what I've done and that's how I can get chevrons on the back. And then because the back piece comes over to the front, on the side it's going to be diagonal and then it's going to contrast with the stripes in the center that would be however you want them to be horizontal or vertical. So if you use any plaid or stripey fabric, you know, even though they are still prints, you are going to be able to see the seam lines. I've got two really interesting fabrics that I used like that. One is a black, white and grey type of 
stripe but it's not the typical stripe I love it rayon spandex super nice this is a heavier one a little more structured but it is going to be absolutely fine for the top and I've decided to make it with long sleeves for this one and then the other one is a double brush poly that has plaid with green beige and black sort of colors in there I rarely use plaid but because now I can cut part of it on the bias I'm all for it I only have a little piece left over to show you but you can see what it looks like the title top and dress is five dollars because it's a feature Friday pattern for only today but because it is a pattern re-release it will also be discounted during Saturday and Sunday I think it's 28% or something for Saturday and Sunday but today it's over 60% off if you like the style and it's a pattern you would like to sew Friday is the day to get it for only five dollars if you miss out you can still get it for a bit less during the weekend but today's the day you know I will leave you my affiliate link in the description box along with all the sale information for this pattern when you purchase through my link part of that sale comes back to me as commission and that is one way that you can support the work that I do here on YouTube without it costing you anything extra the title is now available up to size 5x and it goes up to a bust of 57 and a half inches and a hip of 59 and a half inches there is a standard bust and a full bust option for love notions you choose your base size based on your high bust here if the difference between your high bust and your full bust is four inches or more then the full bust option is going to work for you you will get two inches extra ease at the bust waist and hips in that case and you can see in the graphic here that the top is a fitted top you know at the bust it says minus one to plus one that depends if you're doing a standard bust or a full bust in my case because I'm doing a standard bust I'm gonna have one inch of negative ease there so it just means that around my bust the garment is actually an inch smaller but that's why you're using neat fabrics so that's fine <laughs> if you're doing the full bust then you have one inch of positive ease so whichever it's still going to be nice fitted semi fitted here at the waist you also have a bit of negative ease and at the hips you have about three to five inches of positive ease so it does go a little looser at the hips but in general it is a semi fitted top the dress of course has a lot of ease at the hips because it just flares out you know fitting adjustments so basic they are the ones I do all the time when you look at this front piece there's a little circle with a little cross in the middle marking where the bust height is just basic flat pattern measurements I know that mine is about one and a quarter inches lower than that so what I do is draw a line above where that mark is and I lengthen it just underneath the armhole but above where that bust height point is that's where I lengthen it so the fullness here comes a bit lower to match where it is on my body which is lower so one and a quarter inches added there which also adds length that I need it also brings the waist notch down where it needs to be I'm just taller and that is the only fitting adjustment I did for the sleeves I added one and a quarter inches because one of my versions has a long sleeve short sleeve I did just as is that's all super easy fitting and I know that I need to add the length up above here on neat patterns for love notions I've sewn all of them I am super familiar with the block and how to accommodate that to my lengths and my body and my bust height so super easy if you are newer to sewing and you think this is super complicated because the line looks more complex then the next sewing segment is going to be helpful for you it's only a few minutes let's see how to sew the title top and dress There aren't many pattern pieces for the title top. This smaller one that you see here on the left is the front. Cut on the fold there, you can see the shape of the scoop neckline. Doesn't mean the pattern is really narrow, it's just that the front piece is narrower because the back piece is wider and comes over to the front. So over here on the armhole, it's only partial, but it's completed when you sew these two seams together right there and they form a type of princess seam along the front. For the top, which is this one, you can choose whether you want to cut the back on the fold and have no shaping there or you can fold part of the pattern piece away and have a center back seam shaping that's what I've chosen you can see it goes in at the small of the back this is a short sleeve but there's also a long sleeve option and there is my neck band for the scoop neckline right here I'm just complicating things for myself a little bit because I chose a plaid but I've cut my back piece on the bias you can see the plaid going like that 45 degree angle so I cut those in a single layer both of them and now I just have to mat everything at the back so that that makes sense this is one of the center back seams I am opting to do that for my tops because I like the back shaping 
it would be easier for you if you just did it on the fold if you didn't really care about having a nicer fit I hand pasted this on every single plaid so I am hoping that everything will stay put because everything is matching so far and I hand pasted it right on the edge where the serger is going to go through Okay, let's have a quick look after surging that and I'm very happy with how this matching turned out. It took a while to hand base but it's so worth it because look at everything matching here, all the plaids. After sewing that centre back seam, if you've chosen to do it, then you would have shoulder seams to sew. If you are sewing your top and it's just on the fold on the back, then these would be your first step. This is a neckband piece, you can also finish the neckline with binding but I prefer the wider neckband and I've just sewn the short ends together there. I've done it on the sewing machine so I can just press these seams open, I think it's less bulky than sewing it on the serger. Now I'm just going to fold it lengthwise wrong sides together. This seam will be a reference and now I'm going to just divide the band in half over here and mark it with another pin and then put these two pins together. Now I have the two pins together there in the centre and now I can mark the quarters. Put a pin there and I'll put a pin there. Okay, so I've divided the neckband into four pieces. Here is the neckline. It's a scoop neckline which makes it longer and wider on the front. So we have at the centre front a pin to mark a quarter. That centre back seam is going to be another quarter. And then these are the other reference marks. Don't ever think that the shoulder seams are your reference because as you can see the back neckline is much shorter. So that will never be a quarter. It will always be towards the front neckline right there. I'm just going to take my neckband. Where the seam is, I'm going to leave it there where that seam is at the back. So this other one is going to be here on the center front. I'll just match them up in them. Then take the next pin, the next quarter of the neckband and match it to the pin on the neckline here. Do the same over here. Here is another quarter. And then the only pin I have left is the one in the center back there. Center back seam with the center back of the top. So now I'm going to go to the serger and just stretch the band that's on the top to match the neckline. You can see it's shorter, but this fabric stretches really well. And this is going to bring the neckline in, there's going to be no gaping. When you're doing this, you're keeping the neckline under there untouched. The only thing you're stretching is the band, like this, so it matches. When you get to an area where there's shoulder seam, just make sure it's going towards the back. Now that the shoulders and the neckband are on and the center back has been sewn, you can see how this is going to come together super easy. This is a narrow front piece and part of this back piece is going to form part of the front like that. So these are the seams we need to match and sew. Now you'll find a notch around this area so you can match them both up and that will form a type of princess seam on the front. And then we'll have a completed armhole. With this one you cannot sew the sleeves in on the flat. You do need to sew the seam first and then sew your sleeve on the round. See, I'm sewing one of these two seams. They are a type of princess seam and part of it comes from the back piece. It will just end up falling partially on the front of the body. Super easy, I'm doing one and then I'm just doing the other one. Now it's time to sew the seam of the sleeve. This is a short one, if your sleeve is long, it's just a longer seam, but it's the exact same thing. Okay, here is an armhole. This is the front and that's where the princess seam is. This is actually going to be the reference for the single notch on the sleeve. And then if you come further towards the back, you will see a mark. That's where the seam of the sleeve would be. And that's where there would be a side seam here, but there isn't one because it's, it's offset to the front. And if you go further back and you have the double notches for the sleeve. So all you have to do is get your sleeve, turn it so that you have the right side of the fabric out, put it inside and match up all your references. So the seam of the sleeve would be in this 
little mark right there. Then we have the princess seam that is going to match the single notch on the sleeve right there. And we go over to the back and match the double notches. You can see that one there on the armhole and the one on the sleeve. On the top of the sleeve you also have a mark that will match the shoulder seam. So the sleeve is going to match the armhole one to one. You know, they are both going to measure the same and they are going to fit perfectly so we just have to pin that. I have the other sleeve already inside and pinned and then all we need to do now is sew on the round. Last step is sewing the hem. I've just searched the edge there, kneaded it up, folded it in and hand basted it. I am sewing from the right side of the fabric so I do want that folded edge to stay neat under there and that's the best way I know how to control that. And then I've just got a twin needle here. I've got two threads just threaded normally and then you have two threads coming out there. There's nothing different and you just thread one through one needle and one through the other needle. This is what I'm using, a Schmetz needle. It is a twin needle for stretch and the distance between the needles is 2.5 millimeters. That's what I like and it's quite a small needle, 75 because I am working with a lightweight knit. This is a title top that you mainly saw me sewing. It's super cute, it's plaid. I rarely, rarely ever sew plaid, but I do when I can do some features on the bias because I like how diagonal plaids look like. And the title's perfect for it because there's only a small center front piece where you actually get these going across like that, which is what I really don't like. But I don't mind if it's just on a small area. So that's the front, front small pieces like that. And you can see that the back piece comes over to the front there in diagonal with the bias. On these black stripes, this was the only one I was able to match, sort of. The one coming diagonally here and then going across there. All the rest were impossible, but I did my best to do something at least. <laughs> I really like this feature of this seam coming here because even though this is a print, you can still see it because I cut the back on the bias. The most interesting part is how the back looks on the bias. You know, I took my time to hand baste all of this so that everything would match and you get all this going on like this. Everything is super neat at the back. I think it's a really striking look for a plaid whenever it's on the bias. So I really like that. I like that with knits when you cut on the bias, it doesn't give you the effect that you get with bias on the woven where it can stretch out and things like that. You don't need to really worry about that with a knit because there's no actual grain line here. So don't think I'm getting more ease and more drape because I'm cutting on the bias here. This is mainly just for aesthetic reasons and I really love that. Super easy to sew, short sleeves here. All of them are hemmed with a twin needle. You know the top, you could have sewn it with the back just on the fold and then you would have no back shaping, but I always love that back shaping. And that seam there, I would have put it there if it wasn't there anyway, so that I could do this. So the fact that it's there is just a bonus. <laughs> this is my first title top from Love Notions. I used a double brush poly with a plaid print and I cut my back piece on the bias to get some chevrons and diagonal effects on the side coming towards the front. This is the only way I'll sew plaid. I really don't like plaid going all around my body horizontally, but if there's a bit of bias on the sides, then I'm all for it. And I do like these colors with the green and the black and the beige. The matching on the back took a while. I hand basted that seam to match everything. Scoop neckline is nice, it's deep enough, it's nice and neat with the bands and have a short sleeve. You can see the plaids are matching at the back as well and I really like it. It's a really comfortable top to wear. I think the style is super pretty, it's not basic and it allows you to play with bias and stripes and plaids all in good fun.
The other one I have is black and white and it's sort of a stripey print but different type of stripe. It's not your typical stripe. And you saw me sewing the neckband with this one and this one has long sleeves. So it's all the same. Because the stripes are like this and there's like other features within the stripes. I was also able to cut the back on the bias which I really wanted to do. This is different because the stripes are not really that symmetrical. But you can see that the main white stripes and these stripes are matching. Look at this this little thing right there I think is really awesome it's just so cool at the back I think it looks really really nice I mean no one's gonna have a top like this I love that <laughs> and then of course you know these stripes are gonna come over to the front diagonally like this and then meet this one just going up and down which I think is really nice I love prints like this where I can still use a print but still show off the seam lines it's the best for me nothing special with the sleeves they're just long and they fit really well and they're just stripey up and down, regular twin needle hem, same as everywhere. My neckband, it looks like I cut it from another fabric. It just ended up being black because it was mainly cut on black. But up here you can see a little bit of the gray that's also in the print, same as there on the back. I'm in autumn right now, in the afternoons it's getting quite chilly, so a nice long sleeve top is super welcome. This is my second title top, in this case I made it with long sleeves. My rayon spandex also has stripes as you can see and I was also able to cut the back on the bias to get this really cool chevron effect. These are not your regular stripes, I think they're so pretty and so striking and black, white and grey is always a classic. It is a fitted top as you can see, you can see the princess seams fit really well and part of that back comes over to the front. Same scoop neckline. I prefer the bands. You can also finish the neckline with binding and you can see the chevrons there at the back also. A little bit of work to match those seams but so worth it. I have to say that a scoop is always my preference so the fact that this pattern has it at that depth is perfect. I didn't need to adjust anything and I'm really really happy with this top. Perfect for the weather that is getting a little cooler here in Brazil as we head into autumn and winter. The third one you saw nothing because I didn't include it in the sewing segment. So this is a dress and look at this beautiful print. This is a rayon spandex. It's super light, super soft. Different feel to this one. This one's a little heavier, a little more structured. So even though they are the same sort of fabric and composition, the weights differ. They feel very different. This one's much more drapey than this one. I've had this one in my stash for at least three years and I'm so glad it's addressed now. I love these burgundy and beige colors. I also went with the short sleeves here. Simple neckband. You can see I don't top stitch any of these neckbands. They lie perfectly flat and sometimes with some fabrics that are super lightweight if I top stitch them, I find that I might stretch it out and just ruin that clean look. So I just press it and that's it. It's super nice. This one of course also has that center seam. With this one you can't really see the features that much because it's print all over. So there is a seam right there. You know this is the seam that will match the single notch of your sleeve right there, that seam. At the back you have a double notch. And then this underarm seam from the sleeve ends up just being there on, on part of the fold of the fabric. So there is a notch there. But you saw that in the sewing segment, right? It is a sleeve that you cannot set on the flat, which is an exception for most neat patterns. This one needs to be sewn on the round just because of the way the armhole comes together. Otherwise, it just flares out long. <laughs> Super nice, I love how this one looks, let's see. Of course I had to make a dress and this dress is so cute, it's above the knee, it's rayon spandex, super floaty and light, soft to wear and I love this print with pink tones and burgundy. 
I've got these burgundy shoes that I really like and I want to match things to. Super nice fit and flare dress that fits amazing. Because this is an all around print, you can't really see the details too much of the princess seams, but the fit is amazing. The dress has different pattern pieces and it flares out more at the bottom, but it's still nicely fitted at the bust, waist and hips. And I love that. The center back seam gives amazing shaping and I'm so glad it's there. Up on the top, it's the same scoop neckline and I also have a short sleeve here. I can't wait to wear this when the weather gets hot again in a few months, but I have it made and it was really fun to do. And I'm happy with this one. I mean, I'm still gonna wear it now with a jacket maybe. It's just so nice and it fits amazingly. <laughs> Remember to check out the title top today Friday. It's only $5 today Friday. It'll be 28% off for Saturday and Sunday also. So it's still discounted for the rest of the weekend, but today's a better day to get it. I'm super happy with my three versions. I think they are all so cool. This one's just amazing. I just love it. It's just so striking that the print, everything is just awesome. I got to use plaid, which I don't usually use. I do buy sometimes because I like the colors, I like this green, and I love that I can cut this on the bias and have the features stand out with this. There's very few designs I like for plaid, and this is one of them, and I, I'm glad I got to use up the fabric. And this one, this is just gonna be so, so beautiful to wear. I love the colors, so comfy. Feet is amazing, so. I'm just a really happy and satisfied person right now. <laughs> they didn't take long to sew. They were just really, really nice soles, really relaxing. The best is that they're not basic and they also feel amazing. So sort of ticks all the boxes. This is the end of the video, but I have a little extra information for you if you're interested. There are some other indie brands that are having Memorial Day sales this weekend. Green Style is running one until the 31st through the 31st of May. 30% off site-wide. I will leave that information down below if you're interested to see. Also, five out of four patterns is running a similar sale for Memorial Day, 30% off site-wide. I only found out about these. At, at least you know that they are happening. I'll leave you my playlist with all the patterns I've made from these brands if you're interested to see, and also my affiliate links. That's all from me today. Have an amazing weekend. I'm gonna be sewing a pair of woven joggers for my Patreon sew along, and I'm really excited about that. So I will sort of disappear for a few days, but no, I'll, be, I'll see you again on Monday. Yeah, I'll see you again on Monday. Bye and happy sewing.